Welcome back to the JP Transport YouTube channel and today I'm going to be talking about uh, fuel additives. I've never been a big believer in fuel additives. I just thought uh, it wasn't necessary but now like I was mentioning before in previous videos uh, these emission systems are so expensive and so finicky um, I wanted to try to do everything I could to uh, take care of it. Um, Freightliner uses what they call a one box. It's a box that basically it has, that's why they call it, it has everything in it. And it's, it's one box that does everything. It has the DPF filters. It has the uh, SCR system in it where the DEF's injected to it. So it goes in, goes through the filters, does a loop, it's injected with DEF, does another loop, and goes out the tailpipe. And there's a lot of sensors in that. Um, and that box is very expensive. It's uh, I just priced one um, not long ago, and it's around fifteen thousand dollars for that box now. So I want to do everything I can to protect the one I have, and it would be great if it would last the life of the truck. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. So, but anyway, I'm trying a product out that I can't really say. Uh, one way or another with it because I haven't been using it long enough, probably about 15,000 miles. Um, it's a it's a product called Max Mileage. It's actually, they call it a fuel-borne catalyst. It's not really just an additive, what they claim. They say it's a catalyst because when it's added to diesel fuel, it causes a chemical reaction that actually changes the fuel. And instead of just an additive that's being added to it, uh, it does something else. Kind of like if you ever use JB Weld, it comes in two parts, and when you mix it together, it actually makes a chemical reaction, and then it will harden. Same thing, there's some two-part paints that have a hardener you mix, and when, it, when you uh, do that, then it causes a reaction, and the paint will set up. And uh, so basically what this product is trying to do is decrease soot. Um, it accelerates the burn, it makes a hotter burn, and the soot is really the killer of these. Uh, I haven't taken anything apart on this truck, but I took uh, some pieces off my old one and where the um, EGR tube comes out of the exhaust manifold, loops around, and goes into the uh, EGR cooler. I couldn't believe when I took that apart. It was just full of soot. Now that's not for me, necessarily because I think that's mainly from idling but just years of being idled in the summer probably um, before I got the truck I couldn't believe how much soot was in it um, today's oils are designed for that and what it is is um, they say they will keep that soot in suspension it won't let it jam up into places the engine will actually keep it what they call in suspension and oil today's oil is a lot better than what it used to be um, I just thought I'd, I'd tell you the, what they say, the benefits, I've got it written down on a piece of paper. They say it decreases soot by 60%, um, decreased DEF usage. I haven't seen that myself. This truck, for, I've been tracking it, it's getting somewhere between, depending on fuel mileage, it's getting somewhere between 260 to 200, or it's getting somewhere between 240 to 260 miles per gallon of DEF what this truck's getting right now. Fewer regens. A regen is what I was saying. Uh, when a DPF filter becomes clogged, it has to inject diesel fuel down the tube and create a hot fire and burn that soot out of those filters. That's how it, that's how it cleans it. On this truck, uh, like I said, I put 17,000 on it. Um, there's different kinds of regens. There's a kind of a passive regen, they call it. It'll just it'll go, do it going down the road. <coughs> and then if your filters get bad enough, you have to do what's called a park regen. It takes about 45 minutes. The engine really revs up high, and it creates a lot of heat in that box. Um, this one, I noticed the engine just making kind of a funny noise. And there's actually a filter minder on the, uh, you can scroll through, and it'll show you the, the condition of your filters. I noticed it was, it's always as low as it'll go. I, but one day I heard it kind of making a noise. The line went about halfway. It only did it for a couple minutes. You could hear that it was like the motor was loading up a little bit or something, and then it went right back to uh, 
as low as it would go. I haven't seen it do it since. So that's the only little regen, I guess if you want to call that a regen, that this truck has done, and that was me going down the road. Um, extends engine, and why they say that is because you're keeping, the, that soot is very, very abrasive. And um, on Cummins, what they'll, what will happen to them a lot, I don't know why it's that particular engine, but I've heard a lot of it. It'll become what they, the top of the piston will become carbon packed. And as that piston's going up and down, it, it will basically take all the cross hatch out of your liners and you'll start to burn oil. <coughs> Cones is known for that. Um, and so if you keep the soot out of the engine, um, obviously it's going to last longer. And you will notice on these emissions engines, your oil does not stay clean nearly as long as, say, a pre emission engine. You know, you take like an old Caterpillar. Uh, Detroit's have really always been bad for uh, oil turning black. Not necessarily anything wrong with it. I'm talking the old Series 60s motors. Really, that engine oil turned. I had one. I had a 99 Kenworth with a uh, Series 60 in it, and that that motor turned black. You could drive it through a parking lot after you change change the oil, and it turned black. But you take like say a pre-emission Caterpillar that engine oil would stay clean looking for uh, a long long time and so that's what I'm going to try to when I do an oil change on this truck I haven't I haven't done an oil change to it yet um, I'm not sure what weight motor oil in it this engine's designed for 1030 I always run Dello that's all I ever used on my other truck had good luck with it and I sample my oil um, but that's one thing I'm going to look at whenever I change my oil we'll see how long it takes to, for it to turn black and what is making it turn black is the soot. The soot is being, it comes out of the exhaust manifold, loops around, go through the EGR valve and it is taken back into the intake. So that soot's being blown around and that's what's turning your oil black. So we'll see what that changes and then the only other way I can tell is by uh, oil samples. It'll actually show the soot level in the engine. I kind of wanted to run it one time sample and then start running this stuff so I could see a difference but why I did buy it I ended up buying this from a dealer in um, Austin Texas it's because I had an engine light come on um, oh it was the uh, not a check engine light it's uh, I cannot remember what that it's just uh, it's like the, what they call the mill light um, it's just saying there's something wrong. It's not going to derate you or anything like that. But I looked up the code, and it's what they said was uh, NOx efficiency code, low. And what that means is when it when that exhaust is coming through, it's injected with DEF, brought back around, there's a NOx outlet sensor, <coughs> and it's going to see if that air, if that exhaust is clean enough to be leaving the tailpipe. Well, obviously something was wrong with mine. And the uh, the efficiency was low. I mean, it's not like it's blowing black smoke or anything, but uh, it's not getting enough of. I guess it's nox, nox, nitrous oxide. Is that what nox is? I think. Don't don't hold me to that. But um, so anyway, I had that light come on, and I thought, well, I'm gonna start running that stuff. And it was on a few days, and it went off. And then I lasted about two weeks, and it came back on again. And it was on about three, four days, and it went off, and it hasn't been on back on since. Was it from this stuff? I don't know. Uh, why it went off? I can't tell you. Um, prevents uh, fuel injector deposits. They say this stuff is a cleaner, <clears throat> and it will uh, keep your fuel injectors clean as you run it through the system. I don't know. That's what they say. Lower EGTs. That's exhaust gas temperature. Um, I don't know that's just what they said in their thing and a smoother quieter engine um, I can't say that I've really noticed that but I had so few miles on this truck before I started using it that's why I can't really say one way or another um, the cost of it is expensive um, I bought mine in Austin as I mentioned from a dealer which was probably a little higher I think with tax and uh, everything I think they've got a little markup on it um, it was about hundred and seventy five dollars for a gallon of it that sounds like a lot of money um, 
and how you can it'll treat it'll treat 3200 gallons and so how that turns out to be it uh, every 25 gallons of fuel you add you add one ounce so every time you fill up it's going to be different the way you dose it so every 25 gallons of diesel you add one ounce of this stuff and so that's going to be the cost of this because uh, I based everything I base everything on cost per mile that's how I measure every single thing and so looking at it on a cost per mile it's going to change for every single person because of fuel mileage the less fuel mileage you're getting the more this is going to cost you the more fuel mileage you're getting because you could stretch it farther so on this uh, I should have written that down but it ends up being about let's say it was a uh, hundred and so how you would do that you'd say if they treat if it treats 3200 gallons of diesel you take 3200 times what I've been getting the last 30 days is 10.1 so you take 3200 times 10.1 and that's 32,320 miles I'll get out of one gallon of that then you take the cost of it $175 divided by 32,320 and it turns out to be like four tenths of a cent something like that it's not even a half a cent so I mean deaths cost me more than that death uh, death is probably going to cost, I used to always say one cent, but it's raised a little bit. Probably death is closer to about a cent and a half now, at least on this truck. So uh, that's how you can measure that for yourself. And uh, But I was like, gosh, that's, so, that's nothing. I mean, so if you can keep your emission system clean, I'm going to continue to use it. Uh, there's a couple other products that I might try. I don't know. Uh, there's Get on Pittsburgh Power. Pittsburgh Power is the company that sells it. You can buy it directly from them. And there's a lot of testimonials about this. Read those testimonials and you can decide for yourself. There's guys that have taken trucks to shops and they've taken them apart and can't believe how clean they are inside of them. And I've taken apart these emission systems and they are very, very dirty, usually soot packed. So um, just uh, I can't say one way or another because I haven't taken it apart. I haven't done any oil samples. Um, anything like that so you just decide for yourself I'm gonna keep on using it because uh, it's it's a lot of money for it uh, up front but I mean when you spread it out when you look at the cost per mile it's nothing so I'm gonna keep on using it and uh, we'll see you on the next video thanks